G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard, thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show, and you are here today because it's time to read some rugby news. Uh, before we get into this essay, right, World Rugby Statement, 5 Shape of the Game, 2024 Recommendations, whatever the hell that means, right, before we get into, into this heavy, heavy reading, uh, let's talk about something that's a little bit less important, that is, I have discovered evidence of time travelling. Yes, and the time traveler himself is none other than the greatest Springbok in the history of the Springboks, Damien Willemser. Yes, uh, I have discovered an old footage of Damien Willemser from the future when he's old. Okay, so there's a Damien Willemser from the future working in the past. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm about to show you. And please make sure you're sitting down, okay? I don't want people to fall off their chairs, all right? You know, it's okay if you're sitting on the toilet, but uh, just make sure you're sitting down. We all know what Damien Willemson looks like. We're very familiar with that thing that's on his face and uh, less, less familiar with the abs, but hey, it's apparently there, right? But we're all familiar with, with this this uh this extraordinary talent uh to call a scrum inside his own 22 right uh setting the entire world in, in a rage but hey greatest springbok in history of springbok for a reason right but here it is we know what it looks like and uh and here it is here is him in the past from the future and this is not photoshopped. You can go check this yourself. It is on YouTube, okay? So this next thing, it's gonna be, behold. Damien Willemser travel back in time after retiring from rugby to work in the kitchen in Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. You can go find this on YouTube. Now, something less, something more important. So, World Rugby Statement, they had this meeting, came out with some catchphrases. Uh, I get the gist of the whole thing is that the head punchos living in the ivory towers of World Rugby, right? They wish that their head punchos living in the ivory towers of some other game that is more popular than rugby. That's basically what we get out of all of this jargon that's been thrown at us. You know, maybe they want to work for FIFA, right? Maybe they want to work for, I don't know, Olympics? I don't know. But hey, when life gives you lemon, you make lemonade. When life makes you <laughs> head puncture at World Rugby, <laughs> I guess you just have to complain, right? <laughs> what else can you do? Um, but hey. They have outlined some key points that they want to improve in rugby. It's happening, guys. There's not much we can do. They want to speed up the game. Uh, they want to reduce scrum. And uh, in particular, they want to remove repeated scrum options. So not just, you know, right, telling the referee to speed the scrum up, telling the referee to, to go less resets. They literally want to take out a scrum option. So if you get a penalty, are you just not allowed to take scrums anymore? Is that what's going to happen? Even if you, even if it's like a massive advantage for your team, I don't know. But that's the direction they're going with, and um, it's happening. We just have to take it, guys. We just have to take it. And uh, they wanted to, you know, expand on the shot clock. They wanted to change the offside laws on the kicking, which I think that's a good point. And uh, they want to give more protection to the scrum half to the scrum half. So they want. I, I don't know what that means. I, I mean, the Yorick. Like I don't. I, I never felt that a scrum half. What being like attacked as breakdown is it's already been protected, so I want to give more protection for the scrum half to enable faster ball, even faster balls at the breakdown, I guess. I don't know what that even means, but that's what they're talking about, right? It's almost like they ran out of ideas, but they just throwing that in there, right? They ran out of uh yeah, they just throw stuff in there just to just to, just to fill up the word count. So they wanted to increase the language and presentation of the game. I don't know what this means. They wanted to make the game, I guess, change the way that what the game is. The wording of the game make it easier, more marketable. That's what they say, but I actually don't know what that means. What they mean by you know 
language and presentation of the game. Maybe uh, have some scrum commentary. That's gonna really help. But uh, I don't know. I guess they want to simplify some of the terms, make it a bit easier to understand. But okay, uh, increase women's skin, of course. You know, 2024. Am I right? Uh, players welfare and well-being again 2024 am i right and then discipline process review this is something that i actually don't have an issue with with currently the way they're doing it in fact i didn't even have an issue when they like stopped the game and just like went through the tmo to make sure that uh because i i, I like watching the tmo re replay believe it or not i like watching tmo replay and get a close look live at the game right and try to make a decision for myself and then the referee makes this and then and then that is i, I enjoy that so the, the fact that they have speed that up a lot and having the referee just quickly make a decision and then just moved on i actually like that actually did you know remove a lot of enjoyment for me personally uh so i i actually didn't think that was an issue i, I actually wanted want them to have more clarifications live during the game instead of just be like oh let's just send people off and play on because i like the drama you know i like to know what's happening i like to understand right there and there what is happening instead of having to like google afterwards to find out wh wh why the guy got red carded right and like you just just i like that sort of stuff and the same thing with the try i like the decision uh taking a long time to, to watch a lot of different angles review because i want to see all the angles i want to see the ball being grounded i don't want the referee to rush a decision where you know where i didn't get a clear view as an audience and just have to take the referee by their word right so i don't know what I, yeah i i never had an issue but i can understand a lot of people don't like that but hey uh they wanted to kind of like make that more streamlined i guess and uh yeah lots of jargon but uh it's happening guys there's nothing we can do you know world rugby wants to be a uh, more popular sport they want to you know it is just what it is you know um moving on so the big 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 controversy from two weeks ago was addressed last week the um what do you call it the pablo gabisi's goal missed goal and uh, nigel owens came out and just gave us kind of like the official referees take on this i, I felt like unlike a lot of his previous decisions i felt like he was a little bit soft in this decision he basically said that uh the ball falling off the tee is not an issue they should have just stopped the clock and reset the the, the, the game uh the the player that the french player that's running up the tee is not considered a charge down because he didn't really he, because he, he actually thought that, that, that maybe the you know yeah he, he because he thought the clock is um you, you know because he thought the clock might be run out or something so that's but but he basically said that if the player which i think the other guy that there was a, a not i thought it was i think it was out Al, Al, aldridge whatever his name was he was actually running up moving up towards the the kicker uh when he was taking this making his second attempt after he you know put the ball back up that should have been considered uh a charge down and then i should have been reset and a penalty 10 minutes forward but nigel owens basically said like well that is the law but uh, he didn't actually say that if the French player actually did it. He just said, if you felt that French player was doing it, then you should be 10 minutes forward. But it didn't say that he thought the French player was moving forward, which, by the way, he was. There was a, a player moving forward. And, uh, so, yeah, I thought this was a bit of a low quality response from Nigel Owens. He usually gives us a pretty good indication, but like, you know that the whole point of you doing this review is to tell us if a french player had to move forward or not which there was a player video ev evidence showed there was a player in front of the train up as well moving forward and he just didn't address that he avoided the question because he did feel like the the, the, the referee was having he's, he's a bit of a rookie referee he did feel like he needs to be a bit more supportive for the referee and not really smash him in his like debut match in the six nations right so that's his idea but I, I really felt like you know he should have probably actually given us a clear answer anyway six nations we're back this weekend italy versus scotland england versus ireland and wales versus france this will be quite an interesting round uh obviously italy almost you know beating france last week with a draw uh and also at home this weekend it's gonna probably have scotland on a little bit of alert scotland did manage to beat england last week to win the calcutta cup 
but we know that Scotland's consistency has always been an issue. They always have the mid-season dip. And hopefully it's not going to be this weekend against Italy, but we'll have to wait and see. England versus Ireland, this will be a massive one at Twickenham. Uh, England has lost, losing Calcutta Cup. We really want to come into this game and make a stamp and really, you know, turn things around. England did look a bit lost last round, especially against, against Scotland. But um, yeah, Ireland, it's a well-oiled machine and winning all three previous matches the bonus point. So this will be... Yeah, this will be a different, different, uh, different beast for England to be able to conquer, conquer the visiting Irish. And finally, Wales versus France. Can the Welsh, you know, pull one up at the Millennium Stadium against a wounded French team without Anton Dupont? Uh, it's yet to be seen. The Welsh is, you know, a work in progress. I think the performance, the best performing Welsh on the weekend uh, for the last two weeks almost was Rhys Patchell, who's currently playing in. In New Zealand for the Highlanders, so I don't know. I think Warren Gatlin, if he had the option to, to select Reese Patchell for this match, he probably would have put him on the field. But um, yeah, we'll have to see. The Welsh team has been announced, and a few really interesting changes has been made for the Welsh team as well going to this weekend. So let's have a look at the Wales changes for the French team. So two really, I mean three actually, really big changes are for the Welsh team. So Warren Gatlin have opted to drop George North and Nick Tompkins for Owen Watkins and Joe Roberts for the center pair yeah against the French I don't know maybe these two, these two guys uh, you know I don't watch the club rugby maybe these two guys are better informed than club rugby but that is a big call I, I felt that Tompkins has been like one of the hardest workers carrying a lot of the workload in the Welsh backline I just don't know yeah, how this is going to go against uh, against the French, and then and also he the uh, the Gatlin has finally gone South African, uh, decided to put Daffy Jenkins, the captain, into the blindside flanker position. He has decided to put a lock in the blindside flanker position, as a lot of team has been doing recently. You know, South Africa, obviously the Eddie Jones have been doing a lot as well, um, and then the Wallabies have done a bit of that as well. But yeah, he has finally started doing that for the Welsh. Uh, Daffy Jenkins at number six as another big change as well for the rest of the team. Gareth Thomas number one, Ryan Elias number two, Kieran Aserati number three, Will Rollins number four, Adam Beard number five, uh, Tommy Raphael number seven, Aaron Wainwright retains the number eight jersey, and number nine Tomo Williams, Sam Costello retains the number ten jersey ahead of uh, I Yuan Lloyd. I can't pronounce his first name. Yuan Lloyd uh, in the number 10 jersey once again. Rio Dyer, number 11. Josh Adams, number 14. And then Cameron Winnette return, uh, gets that number 15 jersey for the Welsh. Uh, now, England, now they have a few updated players as well going to this weekend with their squad. The big return is Marcus Smith. Someone that's really, I think, you know, really missing a little bit of a bit of, bit of, a, bit of a flair out of the 10 jersey. I really felt the way that they're using George Ford is just not quite right. Uh, George Ford, the style that George Ford plays is more of an Eddie Jones style, a more, you know, kicking-oriented style, something that maybe Bothwick is trying to shift away from. And uh, maybe that's just not, yeah, not quite clicking with the team at the moment. Uh, so Marcus Smith will be back uh, alongside of Alex Mitchell. And then finally, there was a bit of controversy when the team was announced last week. Emmanuel Fei Waboso was left out of the team who basically came onto the field against Scotland, scoring a try immediately, um, looking ex incredibly you know, strong and big. And uh, he was left out of the team, but then he's re added this week to be part of the squad going into against Ireland. So we'll have to see if Marcus Smith finally gets to, to play some rugby against, uh, against the Irish this weekend because that'll spice things up quite a bit. For the English team. Ireland has issued some injury updates as well. They have got a few big names returning. Gary Ringrose returning. Hugo Keenan. Ian Henderson. And Ole Jaeger. I think the biggest one for Ireland is that centre. Gary Ringrose. Hugo Keenan is massive on the, in the, in, on, the, uh, um, on, the, on the fullback as well. Ian Henderson has been kind of like off the bench. More, more nowadays than a starting player. But still quite important coming off the bench. So some three massive names uh, for the Irish to be returned against England as 
well. So that'll be a massive match this weekend. And next, the English team uh, has been a lot, you know, there's a lot, lot of players been moving overseas these days from England. Owen Farrell, the biggest name, has been has gone to Racing 92. And then we've got the latest exits out of England, uh, Zach Mercer, and then the big man himself, Billy Vunapola, has decided to go to top 14. Billy, come back to Australia, mate. You know, he was born in Sydney, the big boy Billy. So we would like to see him play some Super Rugby at some point. For the Rebels, of course, okay? Definitely for the Rebels, Billy Vunapola. Love to see you there. So Anton Dupont has achieved something that France hasn't achieved for a very long time in sevens, apparently like 19 years or something. Yeah, so only just his second appearance for his national sevens team. He has won the tournament at uh, Los Angeles, I think it was. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. So with a struggling French national team, Dupont is winning medals for his sevens side. Scotland has made a bit of a squad adjustment as well for this weekend against Italy. A um, couple of changes around. So, Javan, Sebastian, Rory Sutherland, and Marshall Sykes. Uh, Jamie Doby has been added into the squad, whilst uh, Tui Polotu, v- Willem Nell, and Alex Craig has all dropped out due to injuries. Next up, Joe Schmidt had a bit of an interview with Australian rug uh, well, last last weeks uh, following the super round he yeah he, he really you know there's a few interesting things he talked about that in terms of selecting players based in uh, Australia and based in overseas he's a pretty traditional style you know he's a Kiwi and then he moved to Ireland and Ireland has the exact same model where they basically only play exclusively local players so he's basically came out and said that Marika, Karen Betty and Sam McCurvy is a great both playing Japan at the moment, obviously. Uh, if it's a 50-50 call, or even 60-40, he would go for the local, like the 40. He'll pick the 40. He'll pick the, the local player over Samu Kurevi or Corin Betty. But he, he's saying that he's not, uh, you know, he's not you know, completely certain. Uh, obviously, that the Giddles law has gone out of window for Eddie Jones. He could have just got any, pretty much any international players that he wanted. But I'm um, not sure if they're going to have that with Joe Schmidt. Maybe they're going to have three again instead of just unlimited. Because Eddie Jones had four at the World Cup. And he could have had more if he wanted to. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. The He did talk about like having one of the reasons that he wants domestic players is having cohesion. With players from the same team who work together throughout the season combinations has been you know working together so he actually talked about how he wanted to pick teams from like four instead of five teams so he actually felt like the cohesion is a bit thin across five teams instead of four um so but you know that's you know in but from, from the larger picture he wants to have player playing domestically um instead of from international for me i actually don't you know the, the one issue that i had Picking players domestically is that unlike New Zealand, you're competing against not only five Super Rugby teams, but you're also competing against the NPC teams. Is it NPC? Is it, yeah, NPC is that what they call it? NCP. Uh, the, the 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 basically they have a second grade in Australia. The second grade team, um, again they, they do have one. Like, is that the Australian one called NPC? I actually don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I anyway. So, so the, the competition in New Zealand is a lot more, 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 more stacked in, in the levels. Whereas in Australia, if you're in a super rugby team, the, 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 the tier below, very unlikely to take your, uh, to take any, to, to be, to be, to be, you know, in contention to your, to your role. Like it's, it's very hard for them to go up to super rugby. And then once you're in super rugby, considering, you know, Western force is not really competitive. You only have like three players competing for your sport at the Wallabies. So if you're like a starting 5'8", at one of the, you know, four Super Rugby teams, uh, minus the Western Force, maybe even the Western Force, say five, one of the five Super Rugby teams, you basically have 40% chance of getting into the Wallabies. Because there's a starting 10 and then there's a reserve, right? 
and that's not a very competitive environment in my opinion because like there's you have like almost 50 like in some positions you literally have more than 50 percent chance of getting into the wallabies you basically guaranteed a spot um you know it's just and, and, and then what, what what i think it's good having international players is it puts pressure on the players that then rolls that their, their, their spot in the wallaby is not guaranteed right it's, it's not like it, it just creates more pressure creates better performance in super rugby as well and then um yeah and it's just just pressure for everybody you know it's competition that drives uh drives success and that's that's what i think and that's why i think south africa is so successful in recent times because everybody domestically is playing out of their minds to try to get into the spring box and they still can't get in because the, the international uh, players uh, are there to compete for their sports and they they just not a lot of them just not quite up to that level like even even you know even despite all the great uh, you know performance that they put in domestically you know that's just you know that's just what happens so Rassi Rasmus speaking of South Africa now had uh, you know obviously the, the, the alignment camp came out and basically talked about how he's you know finding that the new coaching team is working quite well I think the biggest takeaway from from what Rassi's you know verdict on his first um coach meeting is that you know the the, uh, the alignment camp is the addition of the referee consultant something that he has been wanting before the rugby world cup uh with nigel owens who didn't want to join but he finally found a professional referee as a full-time consultant in the form of jaco piper and then he's basically yeah really happy that he finally has that piece of the puzzle solved a professional referee consultant for the team and that uh, he felt like that's the edge that he really wanted. I think that's probably the big positive for South African rugby. Uh, they still, you know, can move up a little bit with that extra addition from the referee consultant. But then, of course, if you can travel back in time, who knows, right? Uh, Sia Khaleesi has sustained an injury on the weekend to his right hand, which requires surgery. Uh, he's going to be missing out several weeks. There's no exact date on when he's going to return. And uh, we know that he's a bit of a freak in, re in recovering from injuries. So even with his hand surgery, he should probably be okay to play very soon. Uh, Super Rugby this weekend. Mono Pacifica Rebels Friday. Waratahs Highlanders. Jura versus Crusader. Uh, Brumbies versus Western Force. Hurricanes versus the Blues. Without Geordie Barrett. And uh, finally, Reds versus Chief. The, 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 the Reds has run the Chief down quite a, uh, a bit last year in, in New Zealand. And also almost knock out, knocking out the Chiefs in the in elimination rounds as well. So this will be a very, very big game, especially this will be at Suncorp Stadium at Lane Park. Uh, outside of that, I think the Waratahs could potentially get another win. And then the, the, the game that I'm most impressed about is this one, Fiji and Enduro versus the Crusaders. The Enduros played the Crusaders last year in round three, that's who I think it was, and beat them at home. And uh, yeah, Crusaders losing first two rounds, not looking good. They're going to go into Fiji for this match. And uh, they have decided to name three debutants. Yeah, this seems like history repeating itself. Last year, they put on a bunch of rookies against the Endurers and lost. And they seem to want to tempt fate again uh, in, uh, in this away match in Fiji once uh, once again and this is I think like I said I'm pretty sure last year was round three or round four and you know the selections I thought was really interesting they've got David Havili once again at 12 had a really shocking week uh, shock, shocking performance last week uh, he, he, I think he literally caught he threw an intercept he got a kick charge down and then he had uh, given away a penalty for three points so he literally cost the team at least you know over 10 points at least you know could be you know up to you know depends on conversion whether that was kicked or not can't remember but yeah it, it literally cost the team more than probably 15 points at least uh, on the weekend just single-handedly by himself uh it was really really poor so he selected it again and another thing that i thought was weird is that knowing that the fijian injura is pretty you know it's a little bit weak in the set piece i'm surprised that they don't have owen franks anywhere on this list who has been extraordinary for the crusaders so yeah uh no one franks and um 
yeah, let, maybe we'll see what happens this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. Next up, we've got TJP and Nara is ready to return finally out, out of outside of uh, uh, finish off on his injury. And he's apparently in really good shape. Uh, Jordy Barrett. So again, this shows a little bit of a help. <laughs> this shows a little bit. So Jordy Barrett had another yellow, red card on the weekend for a high shot. No mitigating, no mitigating factors. And uh, the, they went to obviously judiciary to, to determine what his suspension is going to be. They determined it was going to be six weeks and then reduced by three weeks due to mitigating factors. What mitigating factors? Please tell me. He just straight up ran in, shoulder to head. Um, what mitigating factors? And so yeah, he's only going to miss three weeks. I guess the mitigating factor is that he's uh, the place with the all wax. Maybe that's the beginning factor, but super rugby for you guys. Super rugby. Uh, Sam Kang has sustained a bit of a hand injury, is it? Um, sustained a bit of a, what is it? Back injury. Suffered a back injury and it's going to be out for 10 weeks. So boy, that's a, that's a bit of a, that's a big one. So a back injury as well could lead to, you know, not just like, to cool lead to, yeah, like, fitness issues as well so we'll see how he's gonna recover uh, a little bit of controversy came out of the weekend as well in the girls game so the hurricanes performed the haka that basically um that they changed the words to to to, to basically bash the current current government in new zealand and this is uh deemed to be quite controversial they literally called the government puppets of this red neck government so they literally called the, the senators puppets and called the government redneck so i had a bit of reading apparently the current new zealand government uh is making a move to revert a lot of the pro maori you know pro maori legislations that was introduced under jacinda arden so i'm not too familiar with this but i do know that they wanted to like speak maori more in, in more areas they wanted to do a lot of yeah very pro maori like things like speaking maori in new zealand and they wanted to like reverse a lot of those decisions uh, one of the big ones tobacco sales apparently like a lot of the maori dudes smoke and there was limitation to reduce that kind of a uh, issue but they wanted to eliminate that that um, restriction and uh, it seemed that's very very bad for the maori community because they are, you know, smoking addicts. Like, apparently there was a stat that um, Maori smoked, 20% of the Maori smoked, even though the overall population smokers are only 8%. So there's a lot of backlash to that. And uh, the girls have taken a stance for, for that. Yeah, not too familiar with that, but that's like the gist of why they did what they, you know, what, what, why they did that on the weekend. Uh, Melbourne Rebels had a you know sports psychiatrist go into the weekend's game and it really showed. It really showed the Rebels did not choke. Carter Gordon did hit the goalpost, right? Still need a bit of work there from right in front, but uh, they were looking like they were down and out against the Western Force and then pulled themselves together and won the game quite easily. Just, yeah, like they were down, what, 15 points or something and then pulled themselves to win quite comfortably over the Western Force. It's a uh, very, very impressive um and that, that and then you know they, they didn't choke at the end they finished strong so there was just you know um the sports psychiatrist definitely definitely worked and finally johnny mcnichol the former crusader uh welsh international has decided to return to new zealand to maybe prepare up with Riz patchell who knows due to the family issues so he's returned to, to, to new zealand uh, and immediately asked for termination of his contract from the Scarlets. So yeah, we might see him in Super Rugby soon. Uh, Johnny McNichol, he might go back to the Crusaders. Because, uh, you know, Crusaders uh, struggling a little bit. And uh, yes, that's the news for this week, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Like and comment, subscribe. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who commented on my previous videos. I do appreciate it. I do have a bit of a merch shop that I kind of wanted to get going. So if you want to buy some t-shirts, links in below. Uh, this one that, yeah, it's like, you know, anyway you just have a look and see if you like anything um but uh, other than that thanks to the guys who donates money supports the membership and supports me on patreon on patreon and uh thanks for watching guys have a good week i'll see you guys this weekend 
for more rugby reviews. Cheers.